Hey guys, welcome to game four between Future and 80s Mullet. Upper right hand corner we have Future as the orange Terran, bottom left hand corner we have 80s Mullet as the brown Terran. This is on Benzene, which again, another ladder map if you didn't see it though. Natural expansion down, wide ramp. Kind of a little bit of a wider ramp here. Um, and it's one of those maps that has a hard to get third because the mineral only is up here, like way away from the main. You have this uh, gas expansion here, but you can see it's kind of down some ramps and very exposed. So early game map control can be huge. And you got kind of these interesting ramp maps uh, across here. So future selection. I feel like this is one of those maps that really, really favors those Terran factory pushes, like the two factory pushed or that level one weapons push, um, or comparatively, I guess, Gateway Man. So we'll see how it works out. Future tends not to have a lot of trouble with those early game timing pushes just because he's so aggressive. So aggressive in the early game. And oftentimes is taking the initiative. Supply Depot kind of out that corner for 80s Mullet. 80s Mullet, though, wants to win this match because he is down 2-1. to one. And this is a best of five. Mostly for, you know, it's, it's a pride match. For who gets all the streaming viewers. I wonder if, like, they made some side agreement where, where it's like whoever... Because I'm sure they were both streaming. Oh, a canceled gateway. Future opting to go for a 12 Nexus on Benzene. So initially thinking, okay, gateway. And then opting, nope. Canceling it. Loses some minerals, so that's going to slow it down a little bit. But instead is going, this is very, wow. That's very gutsy on a two player map. <clears throat> very gutsy. S SCV scouts making its way across. And honestly, this is just asking to be pushed on a map that benefits pushes. In my opinion, refinery. Although it, the one thing is, is the travel distance because of just how you have to wind around. Whatever, anyway, refinery is up and we do three, see three SCV on gas. We'll see if Mullet goes for that one gate expand, or say that one gate, that one uh, factory expand build again. And I want to try to stay here once we hit that 100 mineral mark to see if SCVs start getting pulled. And it looks like SCVs are getting pulled. But we might see them sneak right back on as this SCV rounds the bend and sees that expansion being built. Gateway warping back in. Also, keep in mind there was that mineral lag because of the gateway cancellation. That does ca that does cost minerals. Thirty-three percent of whatever minerals were plopped down. Seven X cord and assimilator to follow. Looking for the response from 80s mullet. Looks like instead he's going to opt to play the aggressive economic game. He's just going to go ahead and take an early command center himself. Reen out in the front door. Future playing in the dark, he still has not sent out a probe scout. He's going to use his zealot to do the scouting. Second gateway down for him. <clears throat> this is unusual for from Terran play from my perspective. Almost mostly because of a lot of the uh, pushes we've seen from Flash to counter this sort of stuff. Very typically, I've seen just yeah early factory pushes that are very very difficult for. Protoss to counter. 80s Mullet opting to play more of a long-term economic game instead. In fact, I almost feel like 12 Nexus on a two-player map that gets scattered out. If you ever watch Artosis' stream, it's almost an instant win most of the time. He executes the counter pushes really, really well. Probe just now wandering up. I don't think it's going to get much information past this bunker. Let's see if he does see that command center being built. Click the wrong player in the midst of that, as far as vision that was seen. Additional factory, so two factories being plopped down for 80s mullet. This is going to go into more futures hands as far as what he wants to do. I like 80s having this SCV camping at that 12 o'clock base. He's like, okay, are you going to go ahead and take a quick third in response to try to play that aggressive macroeconomic game? Range about halfway finished. Things just, I think. Future's still kind of debating what he's going to do to follow this up. Like the wall here from Future. Kind of staggered with that supply depot across. Two Marines in there. He has not taken a second gas just yet. So he might actually go for an early third. 
Mach two machine shops plopping down that suggests we're going to see more vulture pressure here in the mid game after the siege tank. And Future is wandering a probe out. He's saving some minerals, so I think he is going to try to opt for a third base, but wow. 80s mullet right on top of it. He knows Future's playstyle. So he's going to wander down and see this nexus being built immediately. Talk about knowing a guy. He's like, okay, I, I know what you're going to do. I know your playstyle. This base wasn't taken. You're taking a base someplace, and you're trying to be sneaky about it. So the SCV immediately going to see that nexus. And probe wandering across. Future, I think, is in a bit of trouble here. Still sitting on two gateways. Robotic facility being produced. Two machine shops. Actually, he's opting, so I take it back. I thought he was going to go for some vulture follow-up, but it looks like he's continuing to produce tanks. 80s mullet, one way or another, should press into this. Considering how low the unit count is, how look how far away this is. The only honestly, just like sieging out here, on this corner, there's a lot of options for him. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Initiative is in his corner. Starting to move out with some siege tanks and marines right now. Only a single dragoon engaging, being pushed back by the barracks. And I like 80s mullet doing that with honestly a smaller unit count to not give complete information as far as what he's up to. Level 1 weapons is being upgraded. I'm almost expecting... No, I take it back. A command center being built. So 80s Mullet opting to, rather than putting on additional pressure with some sort of push, he's keeping the factory count low and instead opting for a quick third command center himself. Wants to play the macro game. Future, and that might... We'll see if it pays off for him. Because Future... He's going for Robo. He's just now getting his fourth gateway. He's been playing a little bit more defensively, expecting 80s to kind of come at him with some sort of timing push, right? So with this breathing room, he's going to go ahead and take his mineral only, kind of setting up and sieging. And it might just be because this is Benzing. And 80s is like, okay, once I have some siege tank and a bit of map control, the game's mine. He'll have to come to me. He's going to have difficulty finding engagement points, and I can just go ahead and do that level two weapons Kind of timing attack from there. Pushing a lot of siege tanks. Starport being built. 80s mold slightly behind in the overall supply count, but not outside of the parameters of where you want to be as a Terran player. Level 1 weapons about three-fourths the way finished. And the Observer is just starting to wander out, and additional kind of scouting information just starting to be gleaned for future. This third base is not up, though. Command Center, see if it gets floated. Future looking for additional bases. Wandering in, seeing a very low factory count. Maybe breathing a sigh of relief. Actually, plopping, you can see, yeah, plopping photon cannons down, expecting kind of a vulture follow up. Level 1 weapons upgrading to the bottom right hand corner, by the way. Probe sneaking across this back corner. And here's the thing you gotta be careful with this, because with that forge, sometimes what can happen is, is like actually cannons there. 80s Molt was wandering to the upper left-hand corner with two SCVs, perhaps wanting to take that base, but a pylon is already in the way with some scouting information. And this probe actually getting all sorts of info for future, just kind of sitting over that line, seeing the siege tanks make their way across. Supply count starting to eke a little bit ahead in future's favor. Science facility up, still just two factories pumping siege tanks this entire time. Off three bases for future. Or sorry, for 80s mullet. So still keeping it very light. I'm wondering, I was wondering if we're going to see like a siege tank drop on this back line. Something along those lines. With a drop, but starport still very quiet. Finally, a third factory being placed, but might be a little bit too little too late. Marine's taking out this pile on upper left-hand corner, but 80s mullet cannot hold this with the units he has currently. Dragoon's wandering up, should be able to get... Definitely gets a free SCV kill. That bunker's going to have to get cancelled. Might have bought some time to go ahead and get these units back home. But Future going to go ahead and wander out and take the 6 o'clock while that's happening. And honestly, this yeah, this amount of siege tanks with this positioning isn't enough to defend all the Dragoons making their way across. More siege tanks wandering up. Should be able to clean up the rest of this army. But I'm kind of curious what's going on with this, this starport. Starport was up, but... Seems to be mostly silent. And that cut into factory timing and production. This is five factories right there. So 
80 Small kind of playing it a little bit. Maybe not fully sure of what he wants to do either. Dragoon's getting cleaned up in the upper left corner. 80 Small starting to wander up. He's going to go ahead and take his fourth. So both players playing a very aggressive economic game. 80's, or sorry, Future has gone ahead and taken his mineral only. He is positioning to go ahead once he has the minerals to take that 6 o'clock. Level 2 weapons. Level 1 armor along the way. Uh, chat commenting he needed it for the upgrades. Did, but this is the control tower is what's throwing me off mostly. Maybe he was expecting an early Arbiter drop. I'll have to ask him about it later in this match. Very thin on the unit counts, very heavy on the economics in the early part of this game. And another command center being built to go ahead and very quickly take that 12 o'clock base. Future taking the 6. So both players trying to play the let's race to 200-200 game. Mines and speed being upgraded off the six gateways inside machine space. I have heard complaints about factory positioning on this map and difficulties there. Handful of Zelts wandering in. There's only two siege tanks to defend it. I think this is going to be a command center cancellation as a result. Future with a huge bank already. And with this, that's a sizable win on his part. And has more reinforcements that might be able to barrel down. 80's Mullet gathering his army. It looks like level... Sorry, level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. So it's actually working towards level 2 weapons. Maybe a little bit off time there. Getting caught a little bit on Siege as the Dragoons are making their way across. So I think this army is going to get cleaned up. Zealots getting all the way to this back Siege tank. The Dragoons continue to peel down. Things not looking good for 80's. Some Vultures pulling up to reinforce. But it looks like this is going to get cleaned up with the Vulture reinforcements. And some mines being planted down. Still... Two Dragoons and a Zealot to disrupt additional bases being taken in that, that upper right-hand corner. Command Center is being floated out, but yeah, still need something there to wipe out what's left. Vultures on the job. I don't think they have any mines left, so they're going to have to do it just through pure focus fire. Which is going to delay that even further. A missile turret. This is clever. 80's Mullet planting a missile turret in the Game of aggression. It's like Game of Thrones, but game of economic aggression. Is that the Cold War, effectively? Turret being planted to disrupt that. Also would catch any sort of shuttle making its way across. Future now sitting on seven gateways, eight gateways. Is getting recall somewhere around here. There they are. Starports with Arbiter Tech. That has been scanned. Recall also being developed. So he wants to play Refugee Toss game. Vultures making their way across the map might be able to get several probes somewhere on the map. There's only a single cannon defending here, bottom right. Level 2 weapons being upgraded. Yeah, catching a lot of probes as they're trying to flee their way across. And it looks like they're going to even be able to meander up to this corner and use that misfire chance, so disrupting a lot of Future's economy. The Dragoons pinning the rest of those Vultures in. They're trying to sweep across the ramp. Nice micro by 80's Mullet, but he's still ending up losing a lot of these Vultures still out on the map, but pinning Future back for a moment. Future still, even in the overall probe count, about 20 supply head, which is typically where you want to be as a Protoss player. His main is starting to look thin, but still producing, which puts him at five bases versus his opponent's four. And he is setting up to go ahead and take the seven o'clock base. Six, seven, approximately. And this probe's still there, yeah, seeing all the units come across. To kind of keep Future informed is the overall gateway count and unit composition. So things looking good for Future right here. But, level 2 weapons is there, level 1 weapons alongside. That's a lot of vultures. Siege tank count a little bit thin. But this is when Terran starts getting scary. Stasis is not yet researched. Psystorm on its way as well. Arbiter's just starting to warp in. However, looks like actually two, two Arbiters should be somewhere out in the field here. However, Future has a huge bank to work with. Is doing a good job of keeping the mine positioning low. And is starting to threaten this upper, le upper left hand base. Making his way up. 
some vultures getting cleared out, and if Future can get a move on, he actually might be able to take this command center out for reinforcements. Are in position in time to defend it. Some mines getting some good hits on those dragoons on that back. Only two siege tanks, and the Arbiter moving up with the Stasis. Honestly, this could completely wreck his base. Stasis in position, catching three of those siege tanks. The dragoons just need to walk up and focus fire that command center down, and then back right back out. And should be able to clear everything else out, but it looks like more siege tanks reinforcing, so the Dragoons perhaps missing their opportunity. And Future in that engagement, kind of going through a funnel, ends up bleeding a lot of troops. And where he had about a 20 supply lead, he's walking out of that with less. 80 staying on top of his macro, trying to sneak by with some Vultures scan style. Unfortunately, cannons are there to provide sufficient defense. Getting a couple more mines to reinforce. Future trying to end around and catch some siege tanks and vultures in transition. Might, yeah, gonna be able to clean up a couple siege tanks and other things as a result, including Goliath. So pinning Mullet back, a couple mines clearing out some, not getting the Dragoons, clearing out Zealots, which I think Future's happy to sacrifice here. And the 80s Mullet once again getting contained on his side of the map. However, level three weapons about to kick in. He's already at level two armor. Also his EMP warping in. Guess technically you don't want to call it completing. What's the what's the equivalent of warping in for Terran? Terran doesn't have warp technology, right? Just the Protoss. I don't know. Something food for thought. I'd like to hear your comments. Caldarian amulet being upgraded to make so we might see more of a focus on Psystorm to follow this up. The vultures still getting repelled. Seems like a constant stream of dragoons across mid map. Future now sitting at six bases. The main is just about. Mind out though. Mullet sitting on four. His bank looking very thin and he is struggling to get the gas he needs to keep this mech army afloat. He is evening out the overall supply count though, and this is now a lot of siege tanks, and he just hit level three weapons. Going against level two weapons comparatively. SCVs being transferred in the upper left hand base. Another command center being built. He wants to go ahead and try to position, try to force Future out of this one o'clock location. I like what Future's done with his vision. Between the probe, seeing all the reinforcements coming across the observer over that low ground, and also the observer here. He's got a really, oops, got really good eyes on what Mullet's doing. And he is about to hit 200. So both players hitting about the 200 supply mark. Big recall, bottom left-hand corner. Catching one science vessel, they're pretty much pinned in, so they're going to have to take down the starport. Good EMP to clear this out, but this is going to be a lot of units to try to evict. Zealot's actually doing a mine dragon. That starport was taken out, so... And the science vessel, I think that was all of Mullet's science vessels. So he's going to be short on detection. Dragoons, this is ex this is great for Future. Future looks like he's going to end up winning this 3-1 uh, to one currently. And it looks like more siege tanks taking the mid game, the mid mid map. He's going to try to counter push this, and take out some bases. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm in the red. Let me try to get it done with what I got. Future's bank is gigantic, though. He can play refugee toss for quite some time. Some siege tanks. It looks like splatting what's left there. This is a big, scary army, though, for Mullet. Now that he is moving, he's going to have to rely entirely on Comsat. He does have some Goliaths. If he can get the Goliaths. Taking out those Arbiters, that would be huge. All Future has to do, though, he can afford to lose some Nexuses. He's got, like, what, 6,000 Mineral Bank? He just needs to bite his time, get some good size scrims off, peck away at this army, and slow it down. And Future needs to get a move on. Or, sorry, 18 Smolt needs to get a, a move on. Although Future now in the red, losing all of this, the Pylons and this Nexus here at the 6. Plenty of Minerals to rebuild. While that's happening, Molt's going to go ahead and take... This is 11 o'clock base. And gonna wander around with a lot of siege tanks. Maybe with a good scan, can take this on the high ground. Siege tank getting wiped out That's by cannon. Both players hitting about 200 supply. Looks like some Dragoons were able to wander up at that 11 o'clock base and deny that. But Future might end up losing, here's the thing. Might end up losing 
his six o'clock base or seven o'clock in the turnaround. So able to at least halt some of the economic production of future and mining and clearing things up otherwise. This is still a big siege tank army near 200 supply with level three weapons, level three armor now coming online, five arbiters being built for future. Actually, many of them hallucinated. So gonna try to go for a recall into this upper left-hand corner and use these arbiters that are hallucinated to absorb the turret shots. Unfortunately, the real arbiter lingering, I don't know that it's gonna be able to get in here. Does get in there, good drop, or sorry, good recall. And the reinforcements, good side storms on those siege tanks as well. Beautiful. Starting to make his way in this upper left-hand corner. Still a siege tank, pounding away at these Dragoons. SCV's pulling up the line to provide some defense. 80's Molt can't afford to lose these units, though. Because his economy looking thin. More Dragoons getting wiped out by additional mines. The probe finally being cleared out there. So this is going to be cleaned up, but not before a lot of SCVs were taken out. And another Arbiter is making its way across the map. Also, Future ended up losing this base at the bottom of the map. So he's actually, suddenly, where he was just way economically ahead, he's still got a big bank. But all of a sudden, he's mining at just the bottom right-hand corner, which is looking very thin. 80's Molt still mining in the upper left and in position perhaps to take the one o'clock base. Arbiter waiting for a recall. He's gonna go ahead and try to take that 11 o'clock. Sorry, that one o'clock. <laughs> Can't tell time all of a sudden. Vulture is wandering around to the middle of the map, trying to get some map control. And now that siege tank army that was here, first of all, distance mining happening. He wants to go ahead and take it. I'm waiting for that siege tank army to get moving. Another recall on top of those siege tanks. A bunch of zealots in there. And between that and the mine drags, actually, it looks like Future is going to be able to clear out this upper left-hand base. 80's Molt needs to get those SCVs out of there. Reinforcements sweeping across the map. Some vultures wandering in. To try to clear this up. The Arbiter not quite covering it. And also scans. Plenty of scans, it looks like, to clear this up. Otherwise, 80's Molt losing a lot of SCVs. But, still has a lot of gas in the bank, somehow. Still has this command center waiting to take that upper base. You can just get around to it. Clear it out otherwise, that Arbiter is going to go ahead and evacuate while it can. And this is still a significant siege tank army that Mullet has. Still within 20 supply. Could go either way. Distance mining happening. Actually, it looks like they're just transferring to the bottom corner. Command center being dropped. Another Arbiter moving this way across. Some stasis to try to delay this command center from landing. Future has gotten this base up, but it is not yet saturated. So he's starting to eat into that bank. Another recall. Upper left-hand corner. Just Dragoons in composition. SCVs once again having to pull off the line to try to provide some defense. And those siege tanks dying. Group, the group repair is not enough. So four Dragoons might be able to take that base up, but Mullet has managed to secure that 11 o'clock. Let's see if he can reinforce and take that out. But the siege tanks are starting to move on the roll, and that's the scary. And catching a lot of probes in transfer. Oh, that's huge. So Future not, again, still not able to get that upper base mining for him to refill his bank. Good size storms, catching a good amount of siege tanks here. The rest of these units, finally sieging. That's going to be cleared out. That upper left-hand base, the Arbiter's still standing. Taking out still some SCVs. Very scrappy game at this stage. An 80's Mullet threatening with a large army of siege tanks towards this main. Has an Arbiter, does have recall ability. Does he have the, the troops, though, to recall on top of this? Dropping a stasis instead. Single siege tank on the high ground, two on the low ground, working on this nexus. And I missed it, a switch to carriers, level and weapons on the way. And I don't know if 80's mullet has enough Goliaths to counter this. He's all ground army currently. So future with the tech switch, late game, 
classic future. Might have the units to just clear this out. Somehow needs to get this base mining. Because he's now mined out in the bottom right hand corner. He's mined out across the map. He's got 3,000 minerals in the bank to work with. 80's Molt still mining upper left hand base. Is still mining at the 12 o'clock. But the carriers are moving up. And I still don't see any Goliaths on the ground. 80's Molt opting for Wraith, Cloak, Goliaths, everything to try to combat these carriers. Has a bit of a supply lead. He does have that level 3 weapons, keep in mind. And honestly, I feel like he should just sack this base, pull out all the SCVs, and try to start mining this bottom left-hand corner. So he's... Edie's mullet, if he can just hang on. If he can just hang on, take these carriers out, he might be able to end up winning this match. Because Future is basically mined out on his side of the map. Upper left-hand base at large risk. Not enough energy for you in EMP. A single Goliath stalwartly trying to fight this back. Science Vessel very quickly killed before an EMP was able to... Mine. The SCV's distance mining. Got ahead of myself in that thought. Siege tanks, the remaining siege tanks, pushing up to try to deny additional mining to future. That Nexus, and also to try to draw these carriers back. This Nexus is very, very light. Command Center has been taken out upper left-hand base, so Mullet is now do down to a single mining base. And the carriers are still in the air. But future is no longer mining. Siege tanks wiped out. Otherwise, Goliaths running into each other as they are often do. This is a great map for carriers just because of all of the map features all over the place on this map. And kind of the bridges. Good Goliath force on the army. Able to get some focus fire. One carrier down. Not quite able to tag another. Should be able to pop these interceptors fairly quickly though. With that level 3 weapons upgrade. Carrier sweeping their way across. Future Sorry, Edie's Mullet taking the 5 o'clock base that he cleared out earlier. So who knew that was going to be a critical moment? Clearing that out earlier so there were plenty of minerals to mine there. Vulture is sneaking up, trying to take out some probes and get something accomplished there. The carrier is fleeing to the bottom right. Maybe want to try to take out that base, but while that's happening, Mullet going ahead and re-establishing this upper left-hand base. Basically counting on the fact that the carriers can't be everywhere at once. And wow, what a huge stasis. Catching a large amount of Goliaths underneath it. Future still has about 1,500 minerals in the bank. Still has his carriers up in the air. But 80's mullet is slowly resupplying and is everywhere on the map. And more and more Goliaths are starting to be produced here on the ground. Catching a carrier in open field, focus firing one of them, very low on health, another carrier down. Four carriers in the air, the Goliaths relentlessly pursuing them, and it looks like they are going to be able to save this command center. As a result, more interceptors exploding in the air. Future is now where I thought he had a death grip on this game at multiple points, is now looking in a lot of trouble. As 80's mullet has gotten this upper left hand base back up. He's still got 63 SCVs somehow. And a, gl a growing Goliath force. There I could spit it out. Had to spit on that a second. Growing Goliath. Growing Goliath force is starting to march its way across the map. Another good stasis to try to protect that 1 o'clock base. Pushing the rest of those Goliaths back. 80's getting a little bit too greedy here. Stepping up, doesn't quite get the Arbiter, now gets the Arbiter, but a few Goliaths cleaned out otherwise. Future's not out of it yet. Still a handful of carriers making their way across, both players looking very thin on minerals. Future is mining. I think he's lost track of a lot of his probes in the main. But here's the thing, Mullet is now sitting all of a sudden on three bases. And he can win it just by producing Goliaths. Heads up. I'm getting some good engagements here. Another Goliath force moving up. Arbiter's down. Carrier's exposed. And it looks like another carrier of Future's down. Two carriers down. That might be all she wrote. I don't know that Future has enough to repel 80's mullet anymore. Some more probes running their way across. 
Are they there to mine, or are they honestly there to try to provide some defense against these additional Goliaths? Some vultures being mixed in as well. And now it is a waiting game for Aedes Mullet. All he has to do is get a sizable army out, engage, get good engagements, and he should end up winning this match. Mining off three bases, having to back off with these additional forces. Some siege tanks making their way across. Future able to get some more ground troops out off the one base, but this is his entire army. And Aedes Mullet is, yeah, has an ever-growing supply count. Has found another base that he might be able to take. It's not over yet. Found another base he might be able to take. And here's the thing, Future will not quit. He will, he will find ways to win matches. He's actually moving around with this probe with his army to go ahead and try to take additional nexus, finding a couple Goliaths out in full field. The Observer is once again kind of sneaking across, catching everything. But now you have a significant amount of siege tanks and Goliaths making their way into the middle of the map. And I do not see any spellcasters in the... I take it back. There's the Arbiters. Not able to get a stasis down. Quickly taken out by the Goliaths. Going to work their way back around, try to get a stasis. Only catching two siege tanks, though. These two siege tanks remaining silent in the backfield. Future able to repel that attack and should be able to clean out the rest. But he's still sitting three bases to one. Carriers once again re-engaging. And Aedes Mullet is once again regathering his forces. Future diving forward. Using Comsat. Try to detect it. Looks like we'll see if these siege tanks and this Goliath get cleaned up. Or even get some additional kills. Actually, they should be fine. Should be able to clear that out. So Future's again mining off one base. Maybe he can sneak this base. I don't know. Maybe he could take out this base at the 5 o'clock. Take that for himself. But in the meantime, 80's Mullet has been mining off three bases for a considerable amount of time. He snuck ahead in supply, which technically means he's ahead. Arbiter down. A lot of Goliaths and tanks pushing forward. Keeping an eye on Future's army. Scanning forward into it. And just hunting it down. Future in full retreat trying to defend his one mining base on the high ground. Things not looking good. Turning around, re-engaging the Goliaths. Getting taken out a little bit. But this is a significant amount of siege tanks for this amount of Goliaths. There are carriers there. The Goliaths moving up. And even with that high ground mischance, it is not paying off for Future. The Dragoons have been wiped out. The Goliaths marching forward. I think that might have been it. We'll see. Siege tanks moving up to Future's last mining base. Two carriers desperately trying to provide some distraction. Some Dragoons coming from behind, but they're getting wiped out very rapidly. Another carrier down. One carrier left. It's down as well, and I think that's all she wrote. Nexus completely empty as it falls. Looks like some High Templar and some Dragoons accepting their fate on the in the mid mid ground. Future is while I was distracted there, it looks like this Archon, this lone Archon, able to take this base out. But 80's Mullet immediately reestablishing another base. He's at 145 supply versus 62. And again, that's gonna continue to grow. It is just a cleanup operation now for 80's Mullet. All he has to do is get his army at Future's natural expansion, and that should be it. I think Future's counting on the fact that perhaps he's, I think he's hoping, more or less, that 80's Mullet's no longer mining. Unfortunately, that base is up. The SCV should be able to transfer. That's mined out now. And bottom left is still mining. And honestly, he can retake 5 o'clock at will. I think the best option here for 80's is to, yeah, just, just go to the natural and start clearing out Future's production. Future still does have about 800 minerals, but that's mostly remaining silent right now. I think he wants to try to save for a Nexus, try to sneak something. Thing is, is even if he takes a Nexus, he can't hold it. And yeah, I think he realizes the situation. <laughs> Someone pointing this out in chat. Minions pointed out in chat. APM has dropped to 20. So I think what he's doing is, is he's taking a break. He's like, I'm going to let Mullet uh, 
expend some energy taking me out from here. I'm gonna think about things, mull things over, get a drink, and call GG there. We're gonna go to a game five. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.